host of Hey Coach, and the athletic director at St. Lucie West Centennial High School. Today we have a very special edition. It's our monthly trying to get our ratings up a little bit, and I'm bringing in two young men that are an absolute credit to St. Lucie County student athletes, and one of our coaches, Coach Parker from Centennial. First of all, we have Jamar Cheney, who's a graduate of Centennial High School, went to Mississippi State, and played for many NFL teams. Welcome, Jamar. Thanks for having me. Okay. Jerry, Jerry Johnson, former Fort Pierce Central player, former FSU player, and also played with the Denver Broncos. Yes. Thank you. And one of our much better officials around in this area. <laughs> I, want, I want to throw that in. But uh, I'm going to go a little bit backwards. I'm going to do our ending right now and thanking you guys for being you. You're really a great role model to this county. You're a great role model for our student athletes. And there's not enough of you guys to go around. But I really want, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for being you guys. It's terrific. Okay, we're going to start with you, Jamar, first. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about your background? Oh, yeah, I was uh, born and raised in Fort Pierce, Florida. Uh, raised, in, my, raised by my mom and my, my three sisters live in the household. My dad was very involved in my life, but, you know, he wasn't in the household. But, you know, he was very involved, and I grew up around sports. Uh, my dad used to take me to play baseball, so that was my first sport I started playing with baseball and kind of built from there. I mean, got my hard work from my mother and my father and just had a dream to to keep advancing at every level and with the right people in place like my high school coaches, college coaches, uh, the dream came true. And, and, you know, one thing I'm always going to remember, or well, really two things from, from knowing you, um, I think it was three years ago when you were starting for the Eagles, and he had the bye week, and we were playing for the district championship against Vero Beach, and Ron, you remember this? And all of a sudden, we look on the sidelines, and there's Jamar rooting us on. Mm -hmm. Came back on our bye week. And then last year, when you were helping us coach the JV, mm -hmm. you coached with us on a Tuesday, you get a phone call from Oakland on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. and Sunday, you're playing in front of 75,000 people. <laughs> it was a little crazy week, but I, I know the student athletes at Centennial think the world to you, and I really thank you for all you do for us. Oh, yeah, I mean, this. It's the best to be able to go out there and you know, help those young men out and try to help them achieve some of the goals they have. Okay. Jerry, a little bit about your background. Uh, I was born and raised in Fort Pierce. Um, I was raised by my mom and dad, which were from Alabama. I'm the youngest of two boys. And um, I didn't start playing football until my freshman year of high school. And um, once I start playing football, Coach Lombardo started talking about college, which I I never even thought about college until I start started playing football at Central, and then um, and that's about it. Then I went out to Florida State, um, played five years at Florida State, and uh, got drafted to the Broncos in 2000, and played a few seasons there, and now I'm back in St. Lucie County. That's great. Ron, you were fortunate enough to coach these young men. When did you know or you had an inkling that these young men were going to make it to the NFL? Well, people use the term great too, too much, too often. There's, you know, very good players, great players. These two gentlemen happen to be very, I would say, great high school players. And above that, great people. Um, neither one of them, I've been coaching 29 years. I've had four kids play four years of varsity football. These two gentlemen did, but they had a dream. I remember Jamar came up, we moved him up, and said, I want to play in the, I'm going to play in the NFL. And I, I said, well, then you go for it, Dad. And Jerry, first year playing football, you could tell how powerful he was. He was a, also very studious, started to learn, asking questions. So, you know, I wouldn't say NFL, but I would just say, hey, they got it. they're grounded, they're in the right direction, they're going to do well. I and mean, then you must have had a special feeling when you saw them on TV in the NFL. I know I was fortunate enough to, to coach a few baseball players that made it to the pros. Alex Fernandez, who pitched for the Marlins and for the White Sox. And I remember flying up to his first game, and, and there was just a, oh, a sense of pride that you, you just you can't explain. 
that you had a little part in these young men's lives and you led them in the right direction. You, you, did you feel like that? Oh, yeah, super. I mean, so proud of them. I, I tell them that still today and, you know, enjoy having them around. But, uh, you know, such good role models. You know, Jamar and I talk about it because he's a little younger. He's been in the NFL a little bit longer and we talk about, you know, NFL not for long. So education is so important mm -hmm. and trying to direct these young kids because, you know, they need some direction. Yeah. Not all, not all of them can play in the NFL. But there's nothing wrong with having a goal saying, hey, well, prove me wrong if I say you can't do it. Go for that dream. You know? yes, sir. Don't let anybody ever tell you you, can. you can't do it, mm -hmm. okay, That's that you true. can prove them wrong. Uh, <clears throat> just a few little topics we're going to talk about. And, and the first thing I want to talk about with you young men is you're recruiting for college. Jamar, what was that like? What were the different colleges that were going after you? I know you went to Mississippi State, mm -hmm. but tell me about the recruiting process. Uh, the recruiting process, I mean, it's a, it's a, it was a little different for me because, I mean, nowadays, I mean, pretty much all the kids probably know about all the colleges. When I was, uh, I didn't know about all the colleges. I pretty much knew about, you know, the big three, you know, Florida, Florida State, Miami, and probably like Southern Cal. Yeah. I didn't know how big, you know, Michigan and Ohio State was back then. But uh, it was a fun experience. Uh, I kind of committed pretty early, you know. Uh, well, not early, but right after the season, you know, University of Georgia, I ended up signing a living tent there. But something ended up happening where I had to go to Mississippi State. But the recruiting process, it was a, uh, it was fun, and, and just seeing like you know the hard work that you put in, you know, in high school paying off. I mean, college is coming by, seeing you, want to recruit you, want to you know, uh, offer you a, a four-year scholarship to come to the university. You know, so it was a blessing. I mean, I first person in my immediate family to go to college. Who was the coach at Mississippi State when you were there? No, oh, Sylvester Croom. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up going where after that? I think he, uh, he was in. Uh, he was in the NFL before he got right, to uh, Mississippi yeah. State. He ended up going back to the NFL once he left. He played for Bear Bryant in he Alabama. Played for Bear Bryant, that's correct. Wow. And I also played a year under the, the coaches there now, Dan Mullen as well, my last year. Mm -hmm. Did um, Did they ever, you know, you always hear these things about recruiting. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are good, a lot of them are not good. Coaches ever knock on other schools or in, indirectly? Uh, not, not really. I mean, when I when I went on one of my visits, I went on a couple of visits before I went to Mississippi State, and uh, right when I was getting ready to go to Mississippi State, I told him my last college. I said, "Y'all gonna leave right now?" And he said, "I got Mississippi State last." He said, "Well, we know you come in here if you're going to Mississippi to uh, visit, going to Starkville, you know." So basically, saying there's nothing to do there. So, I mean, that's about the only thing I can remember. Jerry, how about you? How, what was the recruiting process like? Well, back when I was in, in high school, it, it was totally different than what it is now because, you know, you got all this um, YouTube, you got the recruiting yes. services, you got all kinds of stuff that you got Twitter and all that stuff <laughs> people put highlights <laughs> on TV. And um, like I said, before my freshman year in high school, I never even thought about college and all that. Um, before I got to high school, and then uh, I give credit to Coach Lombardo for really pushing me to go to college. You know, he had he had all kind of colleges coming to the school, and um, uh, my most memorable moment was when Bobby Bowen came to the school. All the teachers, administrators, they would, you know, they would kind of. He was in his heyday. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, that was in his heyday. So, yeah. so um, yeah, it's. It was a pretty awesome, it was a pretty awesome process, um, especially getting the postcards from the coaches while they're on the road for away games and stuff. That they really blow your mind, you know, like man, but well, this coach really likes me, you know. He he's writing postcards from this site, this site, but you know, but it was pretty good. A, a good friend of mine, Charlie Kumo, who was the principal at Port St. High School for many many years, he used to say athletics is the best dropout prevention. And, and there's, yeah. a, there's a great example of that, you know? Yeah. Um, let's talk about draft day. Both of you guys were drafted. <laughs> How did you feel during draft day? Well, actually, draft day was kind of hectic for me just because, I mean, I thought <laughs> I was going to go way <laughs> higher than way. <laughs> no, no, where were you? You were home? Yeah, I was home. I was uh, With your home family? before. Yeah. yeah okay. And uh, we watched the draft the whole process. I didn't even, it was three days to the draft uh, when I came out. I mean, I, it probably was one it was day. Two days. Two days, you know, yeah. when you came out. So. 
And I watched the first day, watched the second day. I didn't even watch the uh, third day. <laughs> <laughs> I just waited on the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, were people calling you up, Jamar, what's going on, you know? Yeah, I mean, they was calling, and they're, they're acting like they're going to they get ready to pick you, and then it don't happen. Or the, the night before, they be like, make sure we got the right number. We're thinking about taking you in this round. Or, you know, so they get your hopes up, and then mm -hmm. that process starts rolling. And, if you not want to, if you if you have a, a place where you think you're finna go and then it doesn't happen and you kind of not panic but I mean it's kind of a you know you expect to go here and you don't and it's kind of a disappointment but I mean it all worked out and you went in the seventh round yeah, yeah. <laughs> seventh round with the Eagles mm -hmm. two years later you start yeah okay so somebody had a right oh, yeah. right decision <laughs> on that but I mean you look at it now I was you know I was watching the combines the other day I never thought I'd sit there and watch the combines and you look at every little thing yeah. but, you, but you know something maybe I should have mentioned this before when we had Jannard Boswick two years ago Ron and I I mean they were coming in you know Bob Stoops is coming in this way Nick Saban's coming in this way the guy from mm -hmm. Michigan State there was a day Ron and I are moving everybody yeah, around mm -hmm. never once did they ask me about his athletic ability mm -hmm. never once is he a good kid how's his great yeah. because like you guys said everything's on TV right now, mm -hmm. on Twitter, on, on all these other things, on mm -hmm. YouTube. You know, they're on all these different things. They know the athletic ability. Mm -hmm. Is he a good kid? Yeah. Is he going to class? Going back to recruiting, it was funny. It's kind of ironic. When Jerry was at Central, Bobby came in in 93, comes in the weight room. Hey, Ron, what you doing? I'm just going to get a good workout. He came back in 94 to get you. And I remember you paid a, played a trick on Coach Rick. Because he recruited you at Georgia. He was the head Rick. coach. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it was, you know, and Coach Rick was at our school recruiting you. And, you know, it's kind of ironic, but they both were recruited by the same gentleman. Yeah. You know, it's pretty neat. Well, I, I remember when Nick Saban came to our office, came down oh, to yeah. your office, and we're sitting there. Assistant Coach Bobby Williams, who was with the Dolphins with Nick Saban. Jannard's sitting there. Next thing I know, Bobby and I are just watching, and Ron and Nick Saban are moving pencils and pens around <laughs> and doing different up, yeah. things. <laughs> and you know, if you're sitting there, like, you know, yeah. and, and you guys would have went on for now. I had to go to a girls' soccer game up in Titersville, but I would have been there. I was just mesmerized. It was a, good, it was a good session. Good man. Mm -hmm. He's a real good yeah. man. But Jerry, it was different back then. How many rounds did you have? I mean, it, it, was, was, it was two rounds. And like Jamar said, it's two days. And yes. yeah, I mean, it was it, two days yeah. of, um, of the draft. Yeah. And like he said, I was expecting to go higher than yeah. what I went. So after, I think it was round one, two, one, two, and three the first day. And um, I expect to go like late first, second round. And I didn't go the first day. So, you know, I was, I was panicked. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I was panicked. I'm like, man, what's going on, you know? And then the next day, that Sunday, I woke up and the draft had just started. It wasn't. It wasn't 30 minutes. I got a call from Mike Shanahan from um, Denver. Said he was going to draft me. I was like, I was like, you know, I was, I was like, I was like, at least somebody uh, drafted me, you know. But um, it's real stressful, mm -hmm. especially when you expect to go higher and you don't go where you where you expect to go. I can tell you that much. And, and you think of those guys that they invite to New York, the first round. Oh, man, and they're sitting I can imagine sitting there. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and the camera's on them, and yeah, they're sitting there yeah, sweating, and yeah, all right, yeah, next day, yeah. I feel bad for them. Yeah. So, you know, put a lot of think pressure on Yeah, a lot Johnny of pressure. Johnny Manziel that one day. Yeah, he was, he was sweating. He was yeah. sweating. And, and so, Rogers, right, we're Aaron, back Aaron back Rogers, yeah. well, that turned out to be pretty good for Green Bay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might not have been that good for Cleveland so far, but I think Green Bay really lucked out on that. Okay, um, person or person who had an effect on your career? Somebody had an effect on your career, a very positive way. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of people. I mean, it's just not one person. Uh, like my mom, just, and my dad, like, just seeing how hard they work, you know. Uh, my coaches as well, you know, back then, you know, Coach O'Neill and uh, Coach Parker, they did a lot, you know. I mean, you could do a lot back then, you know, making sure we got the workouts, making sure we was, you know, you know, eating, putting on the weight that we needed to put on so the colleges would, you know, see what they wanted to see. Uh, and when I got to college, you know, Sylvester Croom, a great man, a great leader, you know, a man that, that you know, pushes, you know, being a man of character and integrity. So I have a lot of people, you know, to, uh, to thank, you know, on that, on that long journey that I have to where I'm at now. What's the difference between a college coach and a pro coach? 
A college coach and a pro. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I just came from a coaching uh, a coaching clinic, uh, but they said the main thing between a college coach and an NFL coach is probably a college coach is uh, probably twenty percent football. Like he, but NFL is probably like sixty percent football. You have a lot more responsibilities as a uh, college head coach. You know, with marketing and recruiting yeah. and you know all that. In NFL, you yeah. got people to do pretty much all that That's right. for you. That's a good point. Yeah. Jerry, right. somebody had a profound effect on your career. Well, in, in high school, like I said, I, I would say Coach Lombardo because I I never even thought about going to college. So he, when, yeah. when I started playing football and and he was he was hard-nosed. Yeah. Him, Coach Parker, <laughs> Coach, um, Coach Bretherick. Oh, uh, man, them three there. <laughs> and um, so he really pushed me, you know. He used to come through the weight room, you know, screaming and yelling, you know, get that rap, come on, you can get it, you know, really, really pushing me. And then once I got to college, um, I would say Coach Amato was my first position coach when I got to Florida State. And he was he was hard nosed too, yeah. so he, he he really pushed me. And then uh, Odell Hagens took over my second year, and um, he pretty much took me on his wings. You know, he used to invite us over to to his house. He's barbecue for us on the weekend sometimes so yeah. I would say them them three there really had an impact a lot of on tough them. love right oh yeah a lot of tough yeah. love and I, and, I, and I tell that to other and I hope you guys and they would understand that when you went to college you were ready you were prepared as a freshman oh, yeah. from what we did at the high school yeah. level and I don't care if it's like Jeremy Little at, at Norwich Division 3 you guys walked in and I think you guys were prepared for college football for mm -hmm. what we did at the high school level you know, at Central and Centennial. I think we, I want to say pat ourselves on the back, but we got you ready because every kid that comes by says, Coach, you got us ready for the next step. Yes. You know, and that's, that's, it makes, makes us feel good as coaches. Let's go down memory lane a little bit. Mm -hmm. Most memorable high school game. I mean, my most memorable high school game, probably not a good one. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I, I think about it a lot, but uh, it was my junior year. We was in the playoffs and we was playing Merritt Island. Team. You know, we struggled to beat you know in the past years. I mean, we had them uh, in overtime. We forced them to kick a field goal. All we have to do is score a touchdown from the ten yard line. We got the best running game, the offensive line, and I don't know, probably in the state. And we threw a pass, the first play, and they kicked Double it off. Double reverse option pass. <laughs> a halfback pass, the first play, and it was intercepted, and the game was over. Just you know, like I that. knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting in the stands. Merritt Island was great. Now I'm thinking. We're going to play Booker T next mm -hmm. week because they had one already. They played in the afternoon. My wheels are turning. We're oh, going to yeah. move the game to Longwood. We're going to have 10,000 people. We hold them. First of all, we tied them at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we had the best running attack around. Yeah. So when we hold them to the field goal, I'm looking at him up in the booth, and he's ecstatic because yeah. we had Fabricio kicking, who was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. right? So the worst thing we're going to come out of is the tie. Mm -hmm. So figure. We run three times. We're going to make it. If we don't make it, we kick it and we go double overtime. We got the crap. And all of a sudden, the famous call. And then in the stands, you heard nothing. <laughs> Everybody got their chairs and walked out. I'm like, is it over now? <laughs> is it over? I mean, I just, and, but what a crap. And that quarterback from Aaron Island was big time, right? He, yeah, didn't go he, went to, he played safety at South Florida. South Florida. We, far, yeah, yeah, we pretty good. much we had a good scheme against. That, that was did, great. I mean, that was, well. I'm thinking, Booker T's coming up. I'm going to make this amount of money to play. <laughs> oh, we would have packed. That would have been the we Friday were. after Thanksgiving, and we were one game going away from state. Mm -hmm. That would have been great. Because we would have played Armwood in the game after that. After they won that, state for they two won years state. in a row. But we, we could have played with anybody mm -hmm. that year. Yeah. 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 Jerry? Well, I could say three playoff games that we lost, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to say those, those, those three playoff <laughs> games. I think the most memorable game was uh, when we played Glade Central. Down there, and they yeah in, in Bell Glaze, and um, and they had Fred Taylor, Riddell Anthony. Oh. I think they signed eight D one Johnny Rutledge, Jelly Rutledge, New all the New Kirk. Idell was a quarterback. Yeah, they signed eight D one guys that year, and we went down there and went neck to neck with them that first half. And then that second half. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fred Taylor show, but yeah, you know, but, to your credit, I mean, 
to you guys on the offense. You really? Oh yeah, we were I mean, going back, back and forth. Was, where they score, we score. They thirty-eight. Scored. Yeah. <laughs> and when Johnny Rutledge said that best running back I ever played against was Alvin Swope. Yeah. And he yeah. was on Fred Taylor's team. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see what they both mentioned? Losses, which shows you it's the game. Yes. It's the game. It's not about. It is about winning and losing, but your memories are boy. What an effort, both of those games. Oh yeah. Okay, because I know, I know, oh, yeah. I, I led with you that yeah. one game, and Ron has told me many, many times about that other game. Jerry and I went through three years yeah. of. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like yeah. I said, we were one game in the state yeah. championship in '92. Yeah. Yeah. One, one game. game away. You know, when we yeah. had some injuries, and you yeah. got to have some luck. You got to make your luck, but you mm -hmm. also got to yeah. have some. Now, how about college? Most memorable college game. Uh, this is probably a couple of them in college. I mean, my sophomore year when we uh, we went to Alabama and beat Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Wow. Uh, that's, that's a big one. And pretty much all of the all of the Egg Bowls, which is Ole Miss and Mississippi right. State, you know, when we played them. And most, most of the time we beat them. They was a, pretty much a better team. But they had a better yeah. record. Right. Paula was ranked. And yeah. we ended up pulling out the upset in those games. So I think those games are the ones that stand out. Especially in 2007, I mean, we had a lot of upsets. We upset Auburn in, in their home. Uh, Alabama came to us that year. Uh, we beat them in our home. So, wow. you know, Very we. Uh, you beat Alabama and Auburn in the same year. <laughs> that, that, that says something. Yeah, yeah. And we beat UAB. So they, we, we, we was calling ourselves the Alabama State <laughs> Champs. <today. laughs> but I mean, now you saw the eight ball this year because Mississippi, Mississippi State had sort of a resurrection. Mm -hmm. So that must have been tremendously big. Yeah, it was yeah. real big this year. I mean, both of them was in. Uh, both of them was in the top ten at that yeah. time. And uh, yeah, they were, sad yeah. thing, we lost that game. We could have yeah. maybe got to the college football playoffs. That would have yeah. been. <laughs> Jerry, how about you? You know I'm gonna say the national championship. I know. Game. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that game. Uh, we pretty much uh, the first half we, we we pretty much was sticking it to them, and then the second half Michael Vick took over. Yeah. And so they came actually came back and almost won the game, yeah. but um, it was a big relief because I played in three national championship games while, while I was at Florida State. Now, now, so, think, now think of that. Yeah, three, was, national, <laughs> three national championship games. Well, so, technically, yeah, four. Yeah, that yeah. was before they started right, the right, championship right. series thing. Uh, yeah. We played Florida and lost yeah. in my redshirt freshman year. So yeah. so technically four championship games. But, um, yeah, I would say when we, when we, when we played uh, Michael Vick in the championship, now, I, I remember, and I know Ron's going to remember this too, we asked Coach Saban how he got ready for Notre Dame and how was his preparation for Notre Dame because he had that big, almost two months layoff. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, we're going to start all over again, step by step by step. Is that something you did also? Well, like, well, back when I was in college, they didn't have all these rules about yeah. how many times you can yeah. practice and yeah. practice and pass yeah. and all that stuff there. So, so all all during the Christmas break, we we pretty much practiced like it was two days anyway. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you did start over. Like yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we did that all yeah. all season yeah. though. So it was it was no letdown. Oh, yeah, it wasn't uh, no we went down. Nah, <laughs> it wasn't no rules. So, nah. so <laughs> and your defensive coordinator at the time, Mickey Andrews. Wow. Who, who, Bear, Paul, Bre Bear Bryant. Yeah. yeah, he played, and, and Paul was with Mickey when they won the championship in 1971 at Livingston. Yeah, he yeah. was. This is yeah. like a Hall of Fame of coaches. It That's really is, because yeah. it's kind of funny when, uh, who was, uh, who got the job before, after the head coach at Alabama who won the national championship, um, playing the NFL, played for Bear. Stallings, Gene, Gene Stallings. Stallings. Mickey was second in the running. And Mickey was going to take Paul. That was his dream job. Yeah. If he would, if he could have got the head coach job at Alabama, he would have. He, he would became a head coach. But, but that's the only head coach that's job that he would take. It was funny. Paul yeah. was going to go, and then Paul told me, "I'm taking you with me." So it would have been really, you know. Yeah. So, but it was those two. Mm -hmm. It's just ironic, you know, the coaching chain how how it works, you know. Yeah. It's really neat. If I ask you guys, what advice would you give to the student athletes today? What would be some of the advice you guys would give to them? Oh, well, me, I think uh, 
it comes back to hard work. I mean, I, like I try to help a lot of the high school athletes around here today. I mean, especially at Centennial because I'm out there helping them work out. But the main thing is hard work. You know, a lot of people say what they want to do, but I mean, their habits and you know the way that they act and don't don't explore what they're trying to do. If you trying to, if you actually trying to make it to the NFL. Why not work at it? I mean, you got to understand it's the thousands and millions of kids yeah. that's probably dreaming about the same thing. What's going to separate you from that other kid, you know? And that's what academics, that's what everything. I think the game of football teaches you how to, you know, work hard, you know? And then if you work hard, and it, 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 it'll force you, like, to work hard, you know, in, at your job or in your marriage as a father, you know? So I think those are the kind of things I try to teach the kids is basically just hard work and don't, let your actions speak for yourself. Don't don't be the one to just talk about. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Uh, show me. Yeah. Pretty much. I pretty much say the same thing. Um, I probably would add. Um, I probably would tell them to su surround yourself with positive people. They that's want, hard to do. Yeah. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. Do, yeah. it, especially in high school. You yeah. know, you have all these bad influences. Yeah. Yeah. Try to surround yourself with people that want the same thing that you want. You know, they have that want to go to college, that want to play college football, that want to play NFL football. Don't surround yourself with people that want to hang out on the streets and do, do all the other stuff that you don't want to do, you know. It makes it a lot different, uh, a lot easier, you know. And um, like he said, you got to work hard. If you don't work hard, you're not going to achieve your goals, you know. You got to outwork the next guy. Exactly, you because... You got to outwork the next guy. Uh, they always say, while you're sleeping, somebody else That's is it. working. That's so. It. It's a team game. I mean, life is a team game. You can't do it by yourself. So you need, like Jerry said, surround, surround yourself with people who want the same thing. And that's so same hard direction. to figure out at times. Who is that influence on you? Who are the people that are going to be in your same path, yeah. the way you're going to go? We just got a few minutes left, and I just got a few more questions. Best athlete you ever played with? Played uh, play with? Played with. On the same team. Uh, or played against? Just best athlete. Uh, I say Michael Vick. Michael Vick, LaShawn McCoy. I mean, there's a couple of them. Uh, Deshaun Jackson. I mean, all of them are fast. Just unbelievable. Uh, yeah, yeah, unbelievable talent. Uh, yeah, I, I have to say those guys. I mean, Peyton Manning. This is knowledge of his game. Yeah. You know, I mean, those guys. Are, Did you ever get to sack him? No, I never sacked him. You know, you got close. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. sacked Tom Brady before, but I never sacked. Uh, Hey, man. Okay. Jerry? Uh, I'll say, I'll say Peter Ward. Wow. <laughs> then there's the name from the past. That's yeah, the name from the past. I think he's, he's, he's yeah. in my opinion, the best, best college player to play on offense. That's in my opinion. Now, they had him a receiver most of the time, yeah. right? They had him a yeah. receiver. I think he, he's remembering well. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he's up there, too. Yeah. Good I'll take these, too. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I'd like to thank you guys for coming. I, I, I can't thank you enough for, for just being friends to all these young athletes in St. Lucie County. Thank you for being role models. Okay. And your actions really show these young athletes out there what it's all about. So I'd like to thank everybody for our show today and welcome to another edition of Hey Coach.